Happy Sabbath! Uh, <laughs> some of you may not be aware of this. I shared it with uh, one brother who had uh, made a comment on uh, the video I made concerning the Sabbath day. Uh, and, uh, okay, what, <laughs> praise God. As you begin to walk in the revelation of what you're going to begin to do, which is what I believe the Feast of Trumpets for the Sons and Daughters uh, inaugurated this year. There's a few things that's getting ready to take place for them <clears throat> that will make what I'm saying now uh, um, clear. Okay? Now, praise God. Amen. When you, re when you get into this, when you... Uh, the the Father, is, uh, uh, you've gone through the process of being received by the Father, okay, you're, you're going to understand what I'm saying. And what Paul said about being all things to all men, okay, and, and he meant that, literally. I, it's my belief, okay, that the, the brethren in the beginning came together on the Sabbath day, okay, Saturday, and it's the brethren. Now, you see, this is this is where some of us. This is why, in the end, okay, them that hear my voice, okay, are them who are going to be gathered together into the barn of God, and why some, even though they're spirit filled, you know, they say they're casting out demons and prophesying him. I don't doubt that that they are, but they are disobedient. In other words, they will not lay down the in-part ministry to come into the revelation. And because of that, they, they're left outside. They, they just don't come in. So anyway, we don't want to get too far off the track. Uh, all thanks to all men. So it's my belief that they most certainly did come together on the Sabbath day. The sons of God. Now these are the stones, okay, that were joined as next to the cornerstone and make the foundation. Apostles and prophets. And Jesus Christ, the first stone, uh, I, I, I don't, sometimes it's it, translated as rock and then it, it, it will cause us to be confused about the rock, uh, the bedrock of which the foundation was laid upon, of which Jesus said he would build his church upon. Okay, and uh, so it, when I say the rock that was taken out of the mountain of God, uh, it's correctly understood as the first rock or stone being taken out of the mountain of God of many who would come the same way being taken out of the mountain of God stones okay the first one was the cornerstone Jesus Christ now all the apostles and the prophets are stones okay who lay next to okay if you understand what a foundation is for a house okay each other and are the foundation but they're not the bedrock so so those of you who have some building and construction knowledge you'll, you'll know what I'm saying when a foundation is laid uh, unless you're in, a, in an area where the ground is so hard that uh, you're right on the bedrock okay most areas in this world Okay, require that you dig down into the earth. And you got to look at this spiritually when we talk about the literal word of God being the field and or the earth. Okay, and we need to dig down into it to get the pearls out. All right, spiritually speaking. So you, you got to kind of keep your spiritual ears and eyes open to catch what's being said. And that's the whole point of what's getting ready to take place for the sons and daughters now and how they are different than the wheat. Uh, 
They're, the wheat are not the sons and daughters of God. They're the children of God, and they are precious to all of the sons and daughters and precious to the Father. But nonetheless, uh, each was given a measure of faith, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold, who, that full corner in the stock, when they matured, fell into the ground and died. Okay? Now, it's that death of which we are risen from who are the dead in Christ who rise up first in the end, okay, who are the sons and daughters of God, like the prodigal son, okay, which I'm not going to go into that right now, but I just want to bring you up to gist so you start to hear and understand what the difference is and how that can relate to the literal word, does relate to the literal word, and that way we have a witness of the spiritual truth connected to the literal writings. Okay, now that's the spirit and the water in agreement with the blood. Okay, now before all this was going to start to take place, the Lord made sure that someone would come as a forerunner, okay, who has entered into that relationship with the Father ahead of time, okay, so that he might be used by the Father as a mouthpiece to the sons and daughters of God. Now this is all in obedience and submission to the Spirit of God and to the truth of the Word of God, of which can only be received by those who are truly sons and daughters. Their heart is filled with the submission to the Spirit of God, to God's voice and to Jesus. Amen. That's all they say. Amen. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Okay? So this isn't going to be a problem for them because they understand the truth of it. But there are going to be those that just aren't going to get it. Okay? It's just the way it is. Anyway, back to these stones. Uh, my sister Rachel, praise God, uh, uh, is, is real near to the truth in the kingdom in regards to what she's referring to. And I think my brother Oz, uh, uh, I forget what his real name is, William, I think. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Uh, he helped me to understand what she was saying because I was unfortunately, oh, I'm glad I didn't say nothing. Amen. Because uh, I really, I got it wrong. I caught what she was saying wrong. And this is, I explained down a post back to my brother, that uh, that's that sin of assumption. See, so I don't care who you are or where you think you may be in the Lord, but if you think you're, it's not possible for you to miss what the Spirit is saying through someone else, okay, and because of that, go off and start to, you know, hey, it can happen to any of us, amen? So I was real grateful uh, to uh, Brother... Uh, for setting me straight on that because I thought she was referring to the rapture and it turns out she wasn't. Actually, she's referring to exactly what it is that I'm sharing and have been sharing with you about what takes place on the Feast of Trumps and has began to take place, uh, uh, amen, on the Feast of Trumpets, which, thank you, Jesus, praise you, Father. If any of you heard this last couple of uh, videos from me, oh, whoa, brother, I was... <laughs> I had it. I just, I, I, you know, you can only sit out here so long, Father God, okay, alone without having, seeing your other brothers and sisters show up somewhere along the line, amen, because it's, it's lonely out here, okay? So, uh, that crying out as, you know, Oh, my God. Now, I don't know who you guys cry out to. Maybe you cry out to each other. But when I cry out, I'm crying out to God the Father in front of the whole family. <laughs> okay? So some think it, you know, well, Brother Andrew, you cried out for fellowship. No. Not with, <laughs> not with all of you. Trust me. The crying out I was making, all right, as one in the wilderness crying out, okay, was to my brothers and sisters. 
And they ain't the same group that you're thinking about, that some of you, unfortunately, are caught up in and will refuse to come out of. But, all right, thy will be done, thy kingdom come. That's where I'm at in that, and such it is. I trust the Lord my God that he's done everything possible for anyone and everyone who is going to come in, is going to come in. Them that don't, it's because they themselves were not obedient, did not submit, or turned away from God, or whatever the case is. There isn't one single solitary soul of whom Jesus placed in the hands of the Father that will not be saved. Unless they themselves have turned away from and walked out of that palm. That's just the way it is. Okay. Back to the stones again. Uh, amen, Jesus. So, Feast of Trumpets. Now, I want you to, you guys that are starting to get gather and start to have interest, because like I explained to my brother, this net's being cast out at this hour. This is Jesus drawing us back into okay, this relationship of the sons and the daughters with the Father. Okay, this is what he said was going to take place. Amen? A relationship between the sons and daughters and the Father was going to begin to take place. This is all part of what Jesus was telling Peter. Okay? Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father in heaven now this is the Father. This is, this is like the, all oh, the joining together of the matrimony uh, of the oneness of the Father and the Son. Okay, we come into that oneness with the Father and Son, and I explained that that's what was, had taken place for me in a dream I saw. Uh, there were two tables set, and I followed behind a younger man, okay, uh, who was in a robe, okay, I, I believe he was bearded, so I don't know, maybe that's why I grew the beard. I ain't cutting my hair either, so I don't know what that's all about, too. But uh, you have to check out them, uh, those brethren, uh, uh, the Nazarenes, uh, uh, or the, there was another group in there that he was a part of, or had, you know, been a part of. Anyway, praise God. If that has been, I don't know, but... You know, submission and obedience to the Spirit of God and submission and obedience to the love of God, amen, Jesus, uh, you're going to find out a whole different thing. Uh, amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the Spirit of God that has led us to where we could die to self. But once that death, burial, and uh, you come into the, the rising up, okay, as a son or daughter, uh, it's the love of God. You. It, it's like uh, you ceased. Well, that's what the word says. He was suffered in the flesh, okay, and crucified the flesh. All right, has ceased from sin. In other words, he's no longer disobedient to the leading of the Spirit of God. He's matured to the point where now he walks in the love of God all the time, twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week. So anyway, this year now, what we're what I believe the sons and daughters are getting ready to come into is that oneness with the Father and the Son. That they're going to come in and begin to sup with the sons and daughters. That the hidden manna of which was shared with me last year, all right, that I gave in regards to the parable of the vineyard owner, okay, I believe other manna, hidden manna, will now start to be given to the sons and daughters of God. At what point in time, I don't know. And But, you notice after this crying out that I went through, okay, all of a sudden now, hey, i got a couple other brothers, a brother and a sister, one sister that I haven't been able to, con I hadn't contacted yet, and then uh, a couple other who have come in and, Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. I know that that submission and obedience to the revelation in them and through them that they are going to begin to walk in is going to start to come forth. i got to shut down right now.